Welcome back to Immortal Empires. Today we're going to be playing some more Kruk Gar. And uh, I did manage to find the source of the crash. Apparently, when we demolished these buildings in the Black Tower of Arken, when the camera pans back over to this area, the game does crash. So for now, I'm going to pretend that this settlement just doesn't exist. We're going to leave these buildings alone uh, because for some reason the game does decide to crash if we try to demolish these. Um, so Arken up to his tricks there, it seems. Maybe uh, when I'm not recording, um, I'll try demolishing these um, at the end of another turn or something. But we'll see. But for now, I don't think it's uh, very important. We don't really need the settlement. We're just kicking back the empire here. So speaking of kicking back the empire, I think we're replenished enough here. And we can reach the pause of despair. And I think we did activate... Which one? I think it was the right of ferocity that we activated. Uh, yes, it does appear to be... It should be up here, actually, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. We have right of ferocity for four more turns. So we're going to try and make full use of this one. So let's go ahead and take Krokgar to the pause of despair. Uh, it should be a relatively easy battle here. And in fact, it gives us a, a close victory. Now, I am inclined to auto-resolve this one because uh, casualties are low and I don't imagine we'll take many casualties from this. So let's go ahead and uh, just auto-resolve this one here. I'm sure there'll be bigger fights for us to fight. We do get 2,000 experience, 1,200 gold. And uh, let's go ahead and occupy this and we gain a new trait, plus 5 leadership when fighting against humans. And also a new follower, plus 3% casualty replenishment rate. That will actually help us. Uh, we are a little bit damaged here, and we gained an Ogre Blade. The Ogre Blade was used by Chaos Dwarfs to tame the kingdoms amongst the Mountains of Morn. How it came to the Old World is a mystery, plus 18% weapon strength. Uh, speaking of Chaos Dwarfs, it's been a while, hasn't it? Maybe soon. <laughs> uh, so Lord Croak has got a level up here. We have maxed Shield of the Old Ones now. What does this do? Uh, corruption minus 2, and 5% for our entire army for ward save. Uh, yes, please. I'm going to grab that. That's uh, amazing. Wow. Um, I really do like Lord Croak. Now, our Scar veteran here. Let's go ahead and give him Deadly Onslaught. Uh, that will help him a bit. And then some of our other Scar veterans. Let's go ahead and give them uh, their Deadly Onslaught too. Uh, that's all the level ups here. And should we... We should probably go ahead and give someone this weapon as well. Uh, let's see, do any of our Scar veterans not have a weapon? Okay, you don't. Let's go ahead and give you the Ogre Blade we just got. There we go, that would be a, a nice addition to our army. Now, what do I want to do with Prigel? Because he's kind of just lagging behind, not doing much of anything. We could go over here, but Tic-Tac-Toe is already pursuing Arkans lands. Ah, maybe we can send... Actually, I imagine Croc Guy is going to Zandri next anyway. Let's see. Uh, I don't think we're going to get rid of this corruption because, yeah, this gives plus 20 vampire corruption. Okay, maybe we need some uh, control buildings here. What is the control? It is going down, right. Um, we do have a control building. If we go over here... Uh, yeah, it's just this one. So let's go ahead and build this. I hope I didn't demolish that last turn. I don't think I did. Uh, we'll go ahead and build some control here just so we don't have to babysit uh, this province. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else we should build? There we go. This is why I like to use the, uh, the build menu. What tier is this? It's tier 4. I think let's build some growth and then maybe we can get it to tier 5. I think that could be useful. Uh, now, where do I want to send Prijo? Hmm... That is a, a a good question here. I think we should keep just uh, keep him by Krokgar, uh, so they can reinforce one another, just in case. Because uh, if we go over here, okay, that's only a single lord. Like here, there's a four stacks. Um, are they attacking the Tomb Kings though? Hmm, interesting. It looks like people are in the many wars here. Right. I think that's enough here. Let's go over to Axti. Yeah, he's doing stuff in Lustria. He's very damaged. We recently just took this from the Lizardmen. Uh, let's go ahead in in-camp stats because we do need that replenishment. And I think I will actually just sit here for a few turns. I think it's better than going all the way back here because that's our nearest settlement. Although, to be fair, maybe we should actually force march and go up um, around here. Now, the bad thing is, can we get off the island this side? Okay, we can. That's good. 
Maybe we should actually go back and replenish. Otherwise, it would take too long. Now, we do have Tepchik. He's going up here uh, to go and deal with these settlements. So, we'll continue sending him on his way. And I think that's all of our movement for this turn. So, now we get to the, the fun part of uh, upgrading some of our settlements. Let's see. There's nothing to be built here. Uh, nothing over here. In fact, it would have a hammer. There is an army here. May dominate me. That's quite the army as well. Abyssa coming back here. We are recruiting some Stegodons. Let's see. Maybe we should get some Regiment of Renown units. Hmm. This is uh this could be problematic here. I think we need to get some Regiment of Renown units. So maybe we could spend some gold. Let's go ahead and get some Croxigals in here. Uh, we could also get some Temple Guard. Let's see. Repodactyl Riders. Uh, let's get a Troglodon. Uh, sure, should we just get loads? Uh, we can also get the Repodactyl Riders. Let's go ahead and get the cold ones. Uh, the Red Crested Skinks. Uh, why not? Let's get those as well. There we go, we just spent uh, a lot of gold there, and then we have our two ancient Stegodons that will also be coming. Hopefully that will be enough to fight Abyssa back, uh, but we can't build anything here. Uh, what about over here? Everything looks good. Ah, Springs of Eternal Life, there we go. Let's go ahead and upgrade this to a tier 3 settlement. We can also go ahead and upgrade for growth, and then what about in the, the mountains here? Uh, let's see. We do have some growth already. Control is control is on zero, so we do need this control building. Um, we could build some extra growth. Uh, I think I will. Let's go ahead and build an extra growth building there, uh, just so we have one in all three places. And apparently we can build somewhere else. Ah, okay, over in the jungle of webs. Um, can we build some income here? There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. And then maybe, yeah, we're too... We don't have enough money now. That's fine. Right, let's go ahead and check our diplomacy. I doubt there would be anything here. Yeah, nothing here. Uh, so let's go ahead to turn 100. Okay, now, where are we on the map? We're over in Lustria. I did notice Abyssa is now changing her direction to over here. Uh, we don't have any recruitment buildings in this province. We do have somewhat of a garrison, um, but I think we do need to go ahead and recruit another lord. Uh, so let's go ahead and get another Saurus Old Blood here. Uh, a tactician, that's to do leadership or uncompromising. Hero self-defense, plus 15% chance of wounded aggressors. Uh, maybe tactician we'll go for here. Uh, they start at level 8 as well. Wow. Uh, so let's go ahead and get Krikta. Um, he's going to help defend these lands. He already starts on a, a, a cold one mount here. I will go ahead and get Root Marcher. And then I think... Let's see. Leadership Missile Resistance. Let's go down his fighting tree. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and give him some armor. Uh, but also give him some melee attack. We can give him full Seeker. And there we go. So starting at uh, quite a nice level there. And then let's see, uh, we can only... Ah, how are we getting feral cold ones? What building do these guys come from? Is it the Geomantic Pilot? No, maybe this. Uh, upkeep recruitment cost. Hmm. You know, I'm not actually sure how we can recruit these. Ah, maybe it's these guys. No, that's recruitment rank. Can't be the food. Maybe it's this. No, it can't be this. It's not this. Uh, that gives us income, golden idols, hero recruitment rank, upkeep, uh, recruitment cost, and recruitment rank. It doesn't unlock the recruitment of anything, though. Now I'm generally intrigued how we have these guys. Okay, uh, I will go ahead and recruit those, though. Uh, the armored and shielded, armor piercing, predatory senses. They do have relatively good melee defense at 52 here. Yeah, I think they're better than Gelin the Skinks. Uh, slightly more expensive upkeep, but we're making plenty of gold right now. Uh, so we're going to get some feral cold ones here. How many are in a unit? 32. Hopefully that will be enough to uh, chomp down on Abyssa here. Um, but that should be enough to keep them back. Now, I'm worried if I leave... If I move this guy, then I'm worried that Abyss is just going to backdoor this settlement. 
Uh, so I think I will keep him here. In fact, what we could even do, if we move here, we could try going into ambush stance. And then Abyssa might think this is empty and then we can catch them off guard. I think we have the army to beat them uh, in a battle, especially with our garrison. Uh, but let's go over to Krokgar, uh, one of our Scar veterans that has actually leveled up. Uh, so let's see, uh, we've unlocked everything here, so let's go ahead and get another rank up in Wound. And then we're also going to... Can we reach the... Oh, we can reach the capital this turn. Is this the capital? It is. What do we need? Ah, tic tac -toe's away. I might just give this province to tic tac -toe because uh, the Black Tower of Arkan seems to break here. And then what we can do is we can take this, this province for ourselves. So we should be able to take Kotha and Fyrus to say, yeah, tic tac -toe shouldn't have a chance to take this. Um, so I'm going to actually attack this not. settlement this My turn. Will not allow it. it does have quite the garrison, but we have dinosaurs and two armies, so we should be fine. Ah, we can't reach it this turn. Oh, I was clicking on a hero. Okay, uh, so we're just going to end up taking Zandri, I guess. Uh, so let's go down to Zandri. I will encircle here. And then we can bring in Prigel to reinforce. In fact, we might even be able to... No, we can't use this stance. Uh, so let's go in there with Krokka. This should be a decisive victory. Yeah, I doubt we lose anyone. So I'm tempted to auto-resolve this, just because it's low casualties. Let's go ahead and do that, and uh, maybe we will fight the siege manually on the capital, though. Uh, so 2.5k experience, 1,600 gold. We will go ahead and occupy this. And we gain a new follower, plus four leadership when fighting against humans, and a potion of toughness. Uh, that's a nice one there. And a warrior bane, plus two melee defense. And uh, all enemies in range have minus 8% base weapon damage. That's a nice one. And we also gained a great plan archivist. Campaign line of sight, plus 15%. So we uh, got plenty of rewards from that battle. Krokgar is now level 41, so I do think level 50 is the maximum level here. Uh, let's see. So we got his weapon strength. We can get some more leadership. Uh, I don't think we care about speed. Let's see. Uh, we could also get mental. Character share, plus 15% of experience earned between all other active lords. Uh, character experience gains plus 20 heroes in lord's army. I think that's good. However... Maybe we could get some more. So, we're level 41. So, we have 10 more level up skills to pick. Uh, 9 after we've used this one. So, if we spend 2 here, that leaves us with 8. If we were to spend 2 here, that leaves us with 6. And we would be able to get these. Uh, of course, we're ignoring the blue tree. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and get him some leadership. There we go. Uh, our Scar Veterans also leveling up. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and give them some melee attack. I think that should overall increase their damage. Uh, let's give this guy Deadly Onslaught. Uh, this one can have Deadly Onslaught. This guy, let's go ahead and level his melee attack. Uh, God, it's quite fun leveling up so many heroes at the same time. Uh, again, we'll go ahead and give him melee attack as well. Now, some of these will not have equipment we did just get an enchanted item right uh we did we got a potion of toughness now you can have a potion of toughness um you don't have an enchanted item but we only have a weapon now i think let's use this and uh, there we go so we have a warrior's bane there we go you don't have a weapon so let's give that to you we're slowly equipping all of our scar veterans now we could build here but i do plan on giving all these to tic-tac-toe uh, just because of that crash issue and we'll take this province maybe one of these as well um, i think it's good that we split the land to be fair though we are holding the east so maybe we could give all this to tic-tac-toe uh, and we hold the east and the north here uh, we shall see Right, but that's enough for Krokgar. Let's go over to Uaxti. Uh, we need to get him home so he can replenish uh, nicely. So we're going to come through Mazda Mundi's uh, land so we can get back to the Piranha Swamps. Just because I don't want to be caught off guard by Rakaf here. And it does look like Gorok is coming down here to deal with Rakaf anyway. So we probably won't have to deal with that. 
Meanwhile, Tepchik should still be marching through the desert, so let's carry on this way. Uh, this guy is on a mount of some kind. We are going to have to deal with these guys uh, relatively soon, I feel. But I think we should deal with the desert and this last um, Tomb King. I think that's Queen Kalida. And then we do have Kusaran. Let's see. Abyssa hasn't moved this turn. Or last turn. Uh, okay, we, we started with these guys. Okay, and he's an ambush. Yeah, that's fine. Right. I did my turn in reverse there. Usually I like to start with uh, Krokgar. Right, is there anything that can build over here? Uh, I don't think so. We can build in the mountains. Uh, we can also build here. Right, let's go ahead and get this up to a tier 3 settlement. Uh, we can also build some income. We're going to need that because we are making more armies now. Let's go ahead and get some growth um, up here. We can build in Kemri. Let's go ahead and upgrade our gold mine. That should also give us some more money. And then over here, uh, let's go ahead and upgrade the growth building. There we go. And uh, that's all looking good. What about our diplomacy? I doubt... Oh, we could get military access with the Southern Sentinels. I think I will do that. Uh, just because that should improve our relations with them. Um, we can get closer to that confederation. Who, In fact, they're the closest to confederation right now. Um, we're not really close with any of the other... Oxyoto still hates me. It's uh, kind of uh, a little bit annoying. Mazda Mundi relations are improving as well. Ah, uh, we are trespassing against Mazda Mundi. I didn't realise. I forgot we don't have that military access. So he's going to hate me again. Um... We're up here. We could come down here, but I just feel it's too risky with a calf there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we could come through here. We'll try it. Uh, but let's go ahead to turn 101. We finally passed turn 100. Those savages, the blue vipers here. The orcs are coming. Not the sophisticated bunch that hangs out in captured dwarf holds, but the more rural boys that wander the southern badlands. Yes, a nomadic horde of extra fighty savage orcs are close and could threaten your forces. Best be proactive against this lost uh, lot before Mork or Gork leads them into your realm. Uh, let's see, where are they? Okay, it looks like we don't actually have a visual on them yet. One thing I did notice during the end turn, though, Oxyoto actually came and killed Abyssa for us. Uh, so it looks like we don't actually have to worry about her, which is nice. Now, the orcs are going to spawn somewhere here. Um, that's a lot of places. Hopefully we see them in the next couple of turns so we can swiftly take them out. Uh, meanwhile, our Skink Priest is now rank 31, so we can go ahead and level him up. Uh, we could get mental. Uh, let's go ahead and get a leveling wound. Uh, I think that's fine. Maybe we should be going mental so we can level up our scare veter scar veterans faster. Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, we can go and attack this now. Are these guys in reinforcement range? I don't think they are. It is forbidden. Yeah, I don't think they are. I think this uh, will be a, a free take here. If we go ahead and move in Krokgar... Um, yeah, there's no reinforcements. Uh, we will go ahead and continue the siege, though. Uh, that was a Pyrrhic victory. I think we will fight this one manually. Let's see. We're also going to move in Frigel. That should help uh, a decent amount. And now if we go on here, uh, it does say a close victory. We can auto-resolve it with no casualties. Uh, but the thing that scares me is there is that full stack right next to the settlement. Um, so I think we should fight this one manually. Just so we try to minimize the casualties we take. Although it is me fighting. So uh, maybe that won't work out so much. Uh, but let's go ahead and fight this one here. So here we go, as you can see, plenty of enemies there in the garrison, all of our dinosaurs marching upon the gate, taking a, a little bit of fire there, uh, but as you can see, there's no actual towers defending this side of the settlement, I think the only towers in this entire siege map are on this wall here, so uh, maybe that's something for the devs to look at, but all of our dinosaurs here going in on the gate, they should break through that in no time, and Lord Croak getting off some magic there, doing huge damage to this cavalry unit, and it looks like Krokgar has now already broken through the gate with his dinosaurs, uh, they really break through that with no effort at all, Lord Croak buffing them 
uh, with that water defense there. Uh, let's get some cinematic shots. We do love watching our carnosaurs charge into battle, ripping, uh, ripping people to pieces here. You can see the carnosaurs in the background making short work of them. Uh, I think that's our skink priest there maybe coming in. Uh, we should see him get some magic off in this battle as well. There come our Stegodons as well. Also charging in. Uh, you definitely would not want to be uh, the enemy here. Uh, imagine trying to hold a castle against loads of dinosaurs. And it does like... There we go. Our Skink Priest does get off his solar engine. Uh, that should be doing quite a lot of damage to the enemy. Uh, maybe we didn't contact them as much as we could have. But we did do uh, plenty of damage there. And we look at this guy. Uh, I believe this is our Scar Veteran here on his Carnosaur. He's dealing very nice damage to the enemy here. And then we go over here. You can see Krokgar on his Carnosaur. And then our other Carnosaurs tying down these guys. Uh, of course, they do have shield in hand. But I don't think that's going to uh, do much to stop the power of a Carnosaur here. The enemy flying in on their mounted horses or griffins uh, by the looks of it they might be able to do some damage as they come flying in uh, trying to do what the carnosaurs are but they think Bella of it uh, running away there and it looks like lord croak is uh, about to throw down a ward save buff there uh, just making sure our carnosaurs are safe and tanky and then it looks like he's about to cast off some magic to deal damage to the enemy let's see how much damage it does this time uh, wow that just absolutely decimates them lord croak is a uh, definitely my favorite caster in the game at this point i think uh, if we go over here you can see we've already pushed back the bretonians quite far uh, all of our scar veterans were going in on their uh, cold one mounts and their carnosaurs and we can see two of our scar veterans going up here to deal with this artillery and then maybe even capture the enemy capture point uh, if we can deal with these trebuchets that would be very nice taking less damage there and you can see the stegodons leading the charge and we do have our regiment of renown unit just behind them uh, shooting down that lightning uh, it does do quite a bit of damage it's a passive spell there almost and as you can see the enemy just retreating and retreating uh, does not look like they want to engage here at all uh, however if we go back over here you can see we're doing tons of damage dead bodies littering the floor everywhere and it does seem that these guys seem to be a little bit stuck they have had some issues the last few battles with units getting stuck on things like fences and stuff. It's a bit weird. Uh, hopefully that gets patched in the next update. Uh, if we go over here, our Stegodons are doing okay though. Uh, if we look at the balance of power, we've basically almost already won the siege. And it looks like our Scar Veterans did abandon taking out the trebuchets. Um, I don't think they're as big of a threat as we first thought. And as you can see in the distance, we do have our allies now coming in. Uh, if we weren't already going to win the battle, I think we definitely will now. We just have overwhelming numbers. You can see the enemy here preparing a counter charge. We'll see if it's successful. In fact, they do stop charging. Uh, we'll see if anyone goes up to meet them. But for now, it just looks like they're holding this hill, uh, trying to show their presence as uh, the rest of their units there uh, get chomped down upon. Uh, in the distance, I think we have some magic about to go off. Uh, maybe the cast got cancelled there. And you can see this Stegodon feeling very brave, uh, just charging through the enemy lines. Let's go ahead and get a, a nice close-up of him as he tries to fight these peasant spearmen. And I think Lord Croak is about to get another cast of magic off, uh, trying to delete these ranged units they do try to escape uh, but they're just gone wiped out just like that and i think that might have actually hit some of the uh, uh the pegasus knights as well and um, we see lord croak trying to cast off of another spell as well uh, so that should deal plenty of damage to them and there we go we see them be absolutely de destroyed and i think that is the victory as we see everyone deciding to retreat there and we do we have a decisive victory there we go so that wasn't too difficult there uh, decisive victory we didn't lose anyone and i think we took less damage than if we would have auto resolved that one so uh, i think that was a, a good battle there but let's get straight back to the campaign map there we go so 4400 experience and 3000 gold uh, that's looking very nice there uh, so we will go ahead and occupy this one of course and we do gain the burning blade of chotek uh, an acrid smell of sulfur 
exudes from its barbed blades. Enables flaming attacks and plus 7% weapon strength. That would be nice against Tomb Kings. Uh, and we do gain a banner of swiftness plus 30% speed for the assigned unit. They also get Strider and Wayfarer. Uh, so that's looking nice as well. Let's see. Krokgar did manage to level up. In fact, I think everyone in Krokgar's army leveled up minus the Skink Priest. Uh, so let's see. Let's go ahead and get another point in leadership. Uh, our Scar Veteran here, uh, we could go ahead and get another rank in Wound, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, Lord Croak as well, let's see, what can we get for Lord Croak here? Uh, leadership, Control, plus 5 in Local, Research Rate, plus 10%. Let's actually go and get that one. I do want some extra research. Uh, Lord Croak is, has so many nice... Uh, he's, he's just so good. So many nice uh, level ups and skills. That's the word I was looking for that we can get there. Um, let's see. Our Scar Veteran. Uh, let's continue leveling that melee attack. Uh, for this one, I think they all have Deadly Onslaught now. Let's go ahead and get some melee attack. Oh, he got two level ups. Uh, looking very nice. So did this guy. There we go. Uh, this guy only got one. That's fine. Let's go ahead and level all of that melee attack. Uh, soon enough, we're going to have an unstoppable army there. Um, Pryjo also got a uh, level up. In fact, I think that army is already unstoppable. Uh, let's go ahead and get Deadly Onslaught. Once all our Scar veterans are on Carnosaurs, uh, life is going to be even better now. This province I really do want for myself. Uh, so let's see. Let's go into the building browser. I just find it much easier uh, to look at a building like this. Right. So we uh, we could get... I don't think we need this. Right. We do have a control building here. That's fine. One thing I do want to build is the Geomantic Pylon. Uh, almost instantly. We do have a food building here. We also have a port. So food actually will not be a problem at all. In fact, let's go ahead and get the level 2 food building. But I think I will go ahead and demolish this. Uh, I'm not really interested in Skink Priests. Just because Krokgar is all about those Scar Veterans. And I would really love to get these Brine Mining Pans here. Uh, just so we can get some more salt. So I think that's looking fine. Uh, I think we're in a good position as well to launch an attack on these armies next turn. And continue on to Koffer and Phyrus. In fact, if we go to Phyrus, this would be the, the Bretonians here. Wiped out at least this faction of them. Uh, so that would actually be preferable. And I just realized uh, we now have made contact with Sartosa. Uh, so that could be fun once we finally leave this continent. I mean, we have left. We went to Lustria, but I mean, uh, going north in the map. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at our other armies. We still have Uaxti here. Now, he's a, he's a bit of a problem at the moment. I think we can come down here. Uh, we don't... I think we do have uh, open borders with these guys. So they won't hate us for trespassing. And then we can come through uh, Gorok's land to get back to the Piranha Swamps. Uh, Tepchik is still marching over here. Who is this? Ah, uh, we have some Skaven here. So all of this is going to be Skaven land. Uh, Kalida is... Are we at war, Kalida? No, she's at war with the Skaven. Okay, so the Skaven is the one that took her lands. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and pull ourselves in here. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to go into normal stance. Let's go ahead and fill up our army as well. Uh, we can get some more javelins. So let's go ahead and do that. And whilst he's recruiting there, it should be I mean we can go ahead and take on the Skaven there. Uh, hopefully we can deal with that. We might have to send a second army though. We have Kusaran here. Now his job is done because of Oxyoto. However, I might just keep him here for a few turns just in case. Meanwhile, we do have Krikta here. Can I still recruit these Feral Cold ones? If you guys know why I can recruit these, uh, please let me know because I honestly have... Wait, is it something to do with the Rite of Ferocity? Recruitment rank, local recruitment capacity. It doesn't say it, does it? No, it can't be this. Hmm, I actually uh, really don't have an idea why we can do this. But I think uh, <laughs> an army of feral cold ones could be uh, interesting and fun. So we're going to keep recruiting there. Uh, he can help defend these areas of our lands. I think it would be good just to have some positions down here. Uh, because we don't yet know who's over here. So they might launch an attack as well. Right. So I think that's all of the armies dealt with for this turn. Uh, we can go ahead and build. Uh, let's see. I'm not interested in building up this province. 
the Black Pyramid of Nagash we could uh, build in. How's the control here? We're currently losing minus one. So let's go ahead and upgrade our control building. We can also go ahead and upgrade the growth as well. Uh, we don't have anything to build here. Uh, Bagar, we can build in Bagar. Let's go ahead and upgrade our to a gem cutter's workshop. We can also get some growth here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that's everything there for now. We only have 200 gold, so there's not going to be anything else we can build. Uh, what about diplomacy here? Uh, Citadel of Dust. I'm really annoyed how you have alliances with the other lizardmen. Um, not a fan of that. I wanted Lustria to be owned by only Lizardmen. Uh, but let's go ahead to turn 102. Okay. Pryjo is being attacked here. And it does say Valiant Defeat. Now we do have a... Um, hmm. Speed. A banner of swiftness here. Uh, I think we will actually give that to Pryjo. We're going to have to fight this one manually. Interestingly, Krokgart can't reinforce. I'm not sure why that is. I'm actually really confused. Um, so we are going to have to go ahead and fight this one manually. I think we might actually lose this one. They do have a lot of cavalry. Uh, but let's see. We will try our best here. So here we go. Can Prigel uh, go against the... Not very good looking odds here. Um, we were predicted a valiant defeat, but can he turn it around? He's going in and charging in on these peasant bowmen straight away on his cold one mount. So let's see him do some damage. He is taking some fire from other units and he charges right through them. Uh, their air units are also trying to get some damage on him as well. I think these are the Pegasus Knights. Uh, in fact, let's just go and double check there if we can. There we go. Royal Pegasus Knights there and taken off again. Uh, they do have very good mobility. As you can see in the background though, the rest of our units also coming in. We do have four Stegodons, but other than that, it's basically all Saurus units. So we'll see if we can do anything here. Rapunz is a, a very strong Lord, uh, so I think we're going to struggle with her. But the Stegodons have now engaged. The Stegodons should be able to get plenty of kills, as long as we're not facing cavalry and things, and things that have bonus versus uh, large. Uh, the Stegodons should be able to get plenty of kills in this battle, and maybe even carry us to a, a victory. If there is a victory, though, I think it's going to be... Uh, a very close one over here you can see some spear units did try to engage with the enemy cavalry uh, but Rapunz there is actually also targeting the spearmen so I don't think they're going to do a very good job uh, let's go ahead to the front lines and see all of the models here fighting we do have some swordsmen we have our Saurus warriors uh, they do have some enemy cavalry here uh, in fact one of them just dies in the distance so we have managed to kill one of their models of course, they have hundreds more, uh, so this is going to be a challenge. Uh, but this is what I love about Total War, zooming in and just watching the battle here. There's so many models on the screen. I don't have the, the best PC, of course, but the fact that I can still run uh, the highest uh, unit models here, and it's just, ah, it just, I don't know, it's so immersive. It just feels awesome. Uh, the enemy cavalry charging back in, trying to help their peasants there. Uh, I think we basically wiped out this peasant. Uh, we're going to have to struggle against those uh, knights there. Uh, in the distance, our Stegodons all working together. Uh, for a moment, I thought they knocked them into the air, but that's just the flying units. They are now deciding to target the Stegodons. If we go ahead and look at the Royal Pegasus Knights, uh, they do have anti-large. Uh, so those could be uh, an issue for us here. But the Stegodons are managing to get quite a few kills. Over here, we also have another clump of units. Uh, plenty of Saurus warriors here uh, dealing with this tiny little peasant rebel. Uh, a few dead horses here, so we have managed to kill some cavalry as well. But overall, I think uh, the balance of power is slightly in the enemy's favor. Uh, so, so far, the battle going as the AI predicted. Uh, where is Prigel? Hmm, I think uh, there he is. Uh, so Prigel is over with his Stegodons on his cold one mount. Uh, staying with uh, probably his uh, best chance of survival is sticking close by those Stegodons. And as you can see the enemy cavalry there uh, it was having some leadership issues. I think that's an enemy lord actually. Uh, questing knights. Okay. Uh, they were just uh, thinking about retreating but they have come back. Um, so it uh, looks like we're not going to get a, uh, a victory here by making everyone rout. 
As you can see, the enemy archers are still alive as well. Rigel didn't manage to wipe them out, and they are now getting some shots off against our units. If we zoom out here, though, you can see the, the battle is very messy and widespread. Uh, for us, we're mostly using all of the same units, uh, so there's not really too much we could do. And we do have a unit routing there. Rapons really hasn't taken much damage. Uh, but we've decided to surround her now with some of her, uh, her cavalry there. Hopefully we can get some damage off. And as you can see, she is on her horse there, fighting back the hordes of Saurus warriors. If we were Petonia, we'd probably be quite proud of her now. But uh, being against her, this is a, a very tedious legendary lord to go against, I've found. Uh, the ancient Stegodons also doing their work, though. Uh, they've decided... To face off against the cavalry in numbers, maybe they can overwhelm them, even though they do have anti-large. Uh, but as you can see, plenty of combat going on all over the place. Uh, cavalry over here as well, charging in against the Sour Warriors. You can see them landing in the background too, everyone covered in blood. And it looks like the Bretonians are actually winning this battle over here. Uh, so it won't be long before I feel everyone is clumped in the middle, because this is where the majority of the fighting is taking place. Uh, in the, the distance there, we saw a fireball going way off target. And the Bretonians do have some magic that they can cast. Unfortunately for us, we don't have a Skink Priest and Prigel doesn't have any magic of his own. So we're we're just limited to the, the raw power of our Saurish units here and our Stegodons. If we turn on the UI though, uh, we, we're doing okay. I think that the balance of power is slightly in our favor now. So the... The AI here does think that maybe we've done enough to slightly shift uh, the battle to our advantage. There are a lot of uh, damaged and wavering Bretonian units, but we just can't make them retreat. And there we go, we finally make one of the units retreat. Uh, they won't be coming back either. Uh, this unit also retreating, uh, but it doesn't look like they're going to permanently retreat. This unit retreating as well. Uh, we also had some retreating units, but it looks like they have come back. As we can see in the distance, these guys are wavering. And uh, we have sent our spears over here to deal with these last few cavalry units. Uh, a theme in this battle was that uh, the cavalry was coming down to just two or three units, but they just kept coming back after routing. It was uh, quite tedious to deal with. But let's go in for another shot here. As you can see, our Cyrus warriors trying their best to fight off the enemy. Uh, but the cavalry here, they just had so much cavalry. Of course, for Bretonia, that does make sense. If we go over here back to our Stegodonzo, sticking together with plenty of support from the Saurus Warriors. In fact, I think a, a bit of a friendly damage there. Uh, he was aiming for these Bretonians, but uh, sent his Saurus ally uh, flying. And the Stegodons do decide to shift focus uh, and focus these cavalry units. They do think about running away, uh, but the Stegodons are able to engage. And then we go, the, the cavalry retreating. Uh, Stegodons aren't too fast, so of course that would be a bit of a struggle. And as you can see, the balance of power is actually shifting in our favor now. Uh, Rapon still hasn't taken too much damage, though. Uh, so it might come down to a situation where it's our, our units just against Rapons. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do much damage to her. But as we take an overview here, uh, you can see the battle is uh, very chaotic. A lot of damaged units on both sides. Uh, definitely the closest battle we have had yet. Uh, we have some spearmen over here. They are deciding to rejoin us. Uh, these guys as well are still wavering. Uh, their leadership is in question. And unfortunately for us, Prijo is now retreating from the battle. So that's not good there. Hopefully he regains some leadership and can return. He only has 600 hit points left. Uh, but as you can see, Prijo retreating has now caused uh, some of our other Saurus units to retreat. And Raponsver casting off her magic uh, just to create some space for herself. But we do quickly surround her again. Just trying to keep us stuck so we can get off all of that damage. And our warriors are rallying. Let's see. That is Prijo. So Prijo has recovered some leadership. So he will be back in the battle. Uh, I think that's probably for the best. We do really need him. Um, if he starts retreating, then of course we do get that leadership uh, debuff, which is not cool. Uh, Rapons is... She's, t she's taken a little bit of damage, but not too much here. And up here, it seems like we're trying to chase off some enemies. In fact, we have some Stegodons there. They might even be rampaging. There we go. This guy's rampaging. Uh, so he's making sure they really do uh, get chased off the map there. Uh, but let's go back over here. Proijo, heavily damaged. Still in the fight. I think he has no choice but to fight. He can't afford to just sit back in safety here. And let's go ahead and watch this Stegodon. He is being kind of overwhelmed by himself. We see some more magic from the enemy go off. Uh, we have some spears charging back in. Uh, but I think Prijo is also going back in. Okay, he thinks better of it. He turns around. 
But the balance of power is slowly shifting in our favor here. I think now it's just a, really a battle of attrition. It has been this entire time as more units decide to surrender. In fact, that's one of their, their life wizards. So they've lost their caster now. That should help us. And in fact, the balance of power has shifted a lot. Uh, so I think we are in the closing stages of the battle. It seems every single Bretonian unit now has retreated. Uh, and it's just Rapons by herself. Uh, we'll see if we can break her. We are doing quite a bit of damage to her now. She's under 50% HP finally. Those Stegodons trying to get some hits off of their horns. And there we go. We see the other Stegodon charging. She is trying to get away. Uh, everyone chasing her though. Her leadership is still at 100%. Uh, so she definitely doesn't have any leadership issues. Uh, it's definitely causing an issue for us though. Uh, trying to kill her. And there we go. We She does... I think that was her casting some magic. Because we don't have any... Uh, Projol there is wavering. We're just trying to move him away. Uh, trying to fix his leadership issues. I think we move him back in as well. Uh, trying to get his leadership back up. We don't want him to retreat. And then causing everyone else to retreat. And uh, right now it just seems like... Uh, everyone's struggling to get a hit on her. But she is down to 25 uh, 25% HP. I think it's just a mellow time now. Before we do get that killing blow on her. In fact let's go ahead and speed up the time just a tad. Because uh, it just looks like uh, we're slowly withering her down here. And she is the only enemy left on the battlefield. And now we do move our Cyrus Warriors out of the way. So the Stegodons can have a, a better chance at hitting her. And there we go. As we look at her. She has about 300 HP left. Uh, she should be dead any second now. The Stegodons trying their best. Yeah, she's incredibly tanky. Uh, I wasn't expecting this much of a fight from her specifically, but... This battle definitely made me respect her a bit more as a legendary lord. And there we go. We do get that Pyrrhic victory. So we managed to turn around the battle. Okay. Uh, that was looking super close. But somehow we got the victory there. We took heavy casualties. Uh, I don't think any units actually got wiped out though. Surprisingly. Uh, but we did lose 900 models. Uh, luckily at the end there. Our Stegodons actually really did come in clutch. Uh, maybe I should have utilized them a bit more. Uh, Pryjo almost dying as well. But we have managed to fight back Rapunzel here. And uh, hopefully that is... I think that's our only big army left. Uh, I think we did manage to kill her there. Uh, so we'll get back to the campaign map and check that one out. There we go. A massive 6,400 experience. We also got 5,600 gold. And we did actually lose one of our Cyrus Warriors there. Uh, but only one unit. Uh, they've lost basically all of their army. I think we have to take the replenishment here. We are heavily damaged, so I will go ahead and take this one. And a Rite of Awakening performed by one of our allies there. And we do gain a Man Spawn Sacrifice plus 4 leadership when fighting against humans for Pryjo. Um, Pryjo does finally get his Carnosaur mount. Uh, so that's nice to see. And he also gains a new trait, End of an Orant. Uh, plus 5 growth in the local province, plus 5% research rate, and double experience gain for units when fighting against Bretonia. Uh, so that's a nice one there. We also gain a Sword of Battle, plus 3 melee attack, and plus 4% weapon strength. And we do unlock a new technology, Sequence of the Laborers. The bigger, stronger, simpler lizardmen do much of the physical labor in their society. Plus 15% income from cities. That's going to be a really nice buff. Taking our income per turn back up to 8,400, even though we have that extra uh, gold there. But if we go ahead and zoom out, we have gained some extra land. Uh, we have gained the cracked land here, which we're going to gift away to Tic Tac Toe. And we have now started eating over, eating into Bretonia. Uh, uh, the Great Desert of Araby is also now controlled by Tic Tac Toe. So Arkan seems to be on the back foot. But right now it doesn't really seem like uh, anyone is just able to stand up against the Lizardmen here. Uh, but sadly that's all I have time for today. I will be back uh, not tomorrow. Tomorrow is Crusader King's Day. Uh, I will be back on Friday with another Krokgar episode. Uh, but until then thank you for watching and I shall see you then.